Hey YouTube world, welcome back to another amazing review from your favorite watch reviewer. Uh, so I don't want to make this video two hours long. I do have a lot of information on this watch. So I'll just jump right into it. Uh, so as far as basic information, the brand is Bleager or Bleager. The model, there is not a specific model number from this company, but it is a Oyster Perpetual homage. I would say this is closest to the 39 millimeter Oyster Perpetual, which is a discontinued uh, watch. The movement is a PT5000 movement, which is a clone um, of a Swiss movement that Rolex used to use. The style, I would say this is a dress slash sport. Uh, the water resistance is 30 meters, um, even though I've seen some other sources that show up to 50 meters. So we'll just say between 30 and 50. So as far as the case dimensions, we have a diameter of 36 millimeters. Uh, the diameter with the crown is 39 millimeters. The thickness of the case is 13 millimeters, uh, but the 39 millimeter option of this uh, watch is 13.4 millimeters. This is a 36, so there's two options. The lug to lug is 45.5 millimeters. As far as the bracelet information, lug width is 20 millimeters. The length is 22 centimeters. The material is 904L stainless steel. Um, the style is an oyster bracelet style. And it is a like a brushed metal finish. Uh, the clasp is a safety folding clasp. Um, it's like a glide lock clasp. Now as far as the dial information, the display is analog. The color is yellow. The crystal is sapphire. The case back is solid, so there's not a clear um, exhibition case back on this one. The material, stainless steel. The hour markers, um, I believe it's pronounced batten, so they're single batten, and I guess there's double batten for a different Ocean Perpetual style as far as the dial. And there is a triangle at the 12 o'clock, so that's the only it's the only hour marker where it's not the same as the others. Uh, the crown, it is a screw down crown, and it does have two, uh, it does have a ghost date, so just an FYI. Uh, let me see what else we got here. All right. So as far as just kind of the background, of the watch this is paying homage to. It's paying homage to a Rolex Oyster Perpetual. The Rolex Oyster Perpetual uh, was apparently the world's first waterproof watch and it debuted in 1926. So Oyster Perpetual, you'll see that a lot in the Rolex world and you'll even see it on a lot of other Rolex models besides the Oyster Perpetual model. Uh, the reason being is because oyster means waterproof and perpetual uh, just means like automatic movement or like mechanical movement. So uh, pretty much applies to every Rolex. I believe that, um, I mean, I believe they're not to put an oyster perpetual on a lot of models nowadays. Um, besides, um, I want to say the original oyster perpetual. But I'm not 100% sure. Now, Rolex, they have five sizes available for this watch. They have a 28 millimeter, a 31 millimeter, a 34 millimeter, a 36 millimeter, and a 41 millimeter. The 28, 31, and 44 millimeters all come with a 22, 32 movement. And the 36 and 41 millimeter uh, comes with a 32, 30 movement. So, yeah, a whole bunch, whole bunch of inf information on this one. Uh, but like I said, I would say this is kind of closer to the discontinued 39 millimeter. Uh, but there is a yellow with this dial, 
with the hour markers and everything. And that's reference number 277200. And that is a 31 millimeter Oish Perpetual. So as far as the movement, I've been wanting a watch with a PT5000 movement for a while now. Um, I'll give you kind of just a general information on this movement. The manufacturer is HK Precision Technology. Um, it is a clone of the ETA 2824-2 homage. So uh, Rolex and Tudor, they used to use this movement and their watches a while back i'm not 100 percent sure if tudor still uses it in any of their models uh, i know a lot of um, current models use it in-house movement uh, as far as jewels there's 25 jewels vibrations per hour 28,800 or four hertz uh, it is a plus and minus 12 seconds per day and in january um, of 2018, the PT5000 did receive a certified chronometer status um, from the Glashut Observatory. Probably butchered that name like Michael Myers butchers people. Haha. Uh -huh. um, and that's in Germany. So, um, that's the general gist of the PT5000 movement. So as you can tell, uh, it, the second sand is extremely smooth and it's perfect because I wanted it on a yellow dialed small watch. So, hey, that's awesome. Now I'm gonna give you the options for this watch and there's a ton of options, okay? So hopefully it doesn't get too confusing. So as far as the dial color, You've got yellow, orange, Tiffany blue, pink, blue, red, green, black, and silver. And the silver kind of looks white. Um, the case diameter, you've got two options, 36 or 39 millimeter. This that you see right now is a 36 millimeter, um, which is what I wanted because I wanted a smaller watch, for my smaller wrist. Hey, go figure. Uh, the dial... Uh, logo so you've got an option sterile so you don't have the bleager logo on it or you have the logo my whole thing with sterile dials even though I am getting a watch that will have sterile dial on it because I had no other option is that sterile dials um, let's say delete the bottom text as well so if there was no automatic on this and no bleeger uh, I'd be okay with that which and in actuality uh, their stereo dial for this watch is like that but uh, for other models I mean a lot of time these manufacturers those just take off bleeger and then have automatic on the bottom for me it's not proportionate it just looks kind of off it's not balanced as far as the dial uh, but this particular one, this the stereo dial for this one does have the automatic and the Bleager logo completely gone. So that is cool. Um, as far as movements, you've got a Minshew movement. You got a Myota 8215 movement. You got a Seiko NH35A movement, and then you had the PT5000 movement. Uh, obviously, I chose the PT5000. Uh, it's a four hertz. Uh, Closer, I guess you can say to the original Rolex um, since it is a clone of the 2824 um, Which I'm not 100% sure if Rolex used that for the wish perpetual back in the day um, But I do know they have used it in their watches And then obviously you've got the Myota 8215 which I own a few of those and I will say it is loud like what people have said so yeah, I'll give them that. In the dial style, you have a single batten uh, hour marker version. Then you have a double batten. So the double batten, and I'll, I'll put a picture so you see the difference. Uh, I'll probably get the Tiffany blue double batten version uh, in the future. And I'll get it in 36 millimeters. I wish more of these manufacturers release 36 millimeter watches because on wrist to me it at least fits my wrist and I do know that 
people have been, you know, wanting smaller case watches. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people wanting these manufacturers to go down to 38 or 36. Um, obviously, there's a size I probably wouldn't want it being too small, and that may be going down to like the 30, 31 area. But 36 to 39, I think, is a great sweet spot, at least for people like me with a uh, little baby wrist. So, yeah, anyway, that's that. So, hopefully, y'all enjoyed this review. I try to cram it all um, under, hopefully, it's 10 minutes. But if y'all have any questions or anything like that, feel free to comment. Like always, um, like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'm going to add my either Facebook or IG to either this review or my next review. And y'all can always uh, DM me if y'all have any questions about watches or just want to chat. But, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe I can tell you a funny mom joke or something. So anyway, guys, see ya.